Hello and welcome to News 3 New Mexico. I'm Landry Widener and today I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Christina Sauer, who is a child psychiatrist at the University of New Mexico. I am also joined with Mr. Bobby Hurd, who is the clinical director at the La Casa Behavioral Health Services in Roswell. First, I'm going to start with Bobby. Um, I want to give you the first question. Uh, the pandemics and the effects it is causing worldwide can be very overwhelming, and we know that people react differently to stressful situations. Um, what are the different kinds of issues that this could create for people? Well, as a community mental health center, we're really thinking about two separate populations. Um, one is those with severe, or moderate to severe mental health issues who are really susceptible to getting sick during um, with mental health issues during during something like this crisis. Um, the other population is people who not normally had uh, mental health issues in their past and um, are not used to these kind of symptoms of depression, anxiety, stress, um, maybe who don't have the coping skills and don't know the resources to be able to reach out to get help um, in these kinds of situations. So we work on really trying to focus on supporting the patients that we have who have moderate to severe mental health issues and being available for those people who are, who are uh, uh, experiencing acute issues as a result of, uh, of the virus. Right, thank you for doing that. Um, and Dr. Sauer, I'll go to you. Because of the lack of social interaction, we know that you specialize, with, specialize in children. Um, because of the, social, the lack of social interaction opportunities, do you think that this could alter the social and emotional skills in children? That's a good question. I think we're trying to do a lot of preventative work with families, um, you know, as from an educational level and then when we're working with them individually around how they can best support their children. Um, I mean, you know, we're certainly hoping that this is a shorter term concern and uh, you know that kids will get back to more routine even if the routine's a little different with school in the next few months um, but I mean there's the possibility that definitely children can struggle in the short run with the transitions and understanding why these changes are happening and anxiety and fear just like adults you know especially if they're not in a very supportive environment um, but it, I think that's just you know more reason for all of us to be mindful not only of our own families but those that we know and maybe those that we work with about how we can be reaching out and you know trying to support um, families to have as much strength as they can to you know try to in ways minimize the longer lasting impact um, that some of this has had on on children at this point right um and Bobby, I'll go back to you. The isolation and the fear of the unknown can be a very dangerous combination. So what would you recommend to people on how to cope with that uncertainty? Well, I would say for the first thing is uh, take a time out. Um, disconnect from what's going on. Uh, do some normal things around the house. Find some things that need to be done. and you've been wanting to do, but haven't had time and do those things. Take time out to do some self-care, take a hot bath, uh, do those things that make you feel relaxed and comfortable in your home, whether that's watching a movie on the couch with your family, um, doing things that you would normally do and feel refreshed afterwards. For some of us, it's being around people and our family and and enjoying some time together. And for others, it's taking a little bit of private time and, and kind of recharging. Yeah. Um, and then Dr. Sauer, going back to you, I know this is kind of a large concern, especially now, but uh, some children have very little structure at home and they depend on school to get away from that. Um, what advice do you have in regards to this? Definitely. Yeah, so it is true. I mean, structure and routine are important for all of us, and especially for kids around, um, you know, feeling like they have some sense of control and safety and helping with like self discipline and impulse regulation. So we know those are really important things to be considering. Um, you know, I do think it's really valuable for families and again, for those of us that are working with families to be encouraging um, commitment to and consideration of, you know, routines, of course, they're not going to have the same structure that they do at school, which for many is helpful, although for many children, it can also be, you know, a stressor. So um, I think within the home, 
just trying to encourage families to be mindful of how they implement and incorporate routines around basic things like sleep, hygiene, you know, people getting up, getting dressed, um, nutrition, activity, and then for those children that are now engaged online in school, also trying to build some routines around school and, you know, incorporating that with parent work if that's necessary too. Um, so I think you raise a really important point that school serves many functions, especially routine for kids. And so the more that we can consider, like, how can we build these temporary routines at home that don't need to be perfect and don't need to be just like school, but just need to be something that kids understand and can adapt to so that they feel like day to day, they kind of know what's coming. Um, that's definitely important for their behavioral and emotional regulation as well. Yeah. Um, Bobby, the media coverage talking about media, it's nonstop and we see it everywhere. We see coronavirus, COVID-19, all of that. And it feels like it's uh, just overtaking everything. And I know people are looking for a lot of answers. So trying to decipher between misinformation and the truth, do you have any advice for that? You know, I I think just take a look at the social media sites and the information that's coming in on those. And you can tell that, uh, there's a lot of people who are not doing well who are staying on those kind of things. Um, I think limiting your your intake um, of news and the amount of time you spend on social media sites is probably really healthy. Um, there could be a lot of misinformation out there. Um, it doesn't take long to realize that when you've got when you start surfing around on these social media websites mm-hmm. about the things that are going on. And I do think sitting around and watching the news all day can be a bit depressing normally, especially during these times. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely have, can relate to that. Um, Dr. Sauer, we talked about the home conditions in the previous question uh, for children and how they might depend on school to get away from that. Um, do you think there's potential for an increase in trauma due to poverty, exposure to violence, and neglect within children and adolescents? Unfortunately, yes, I, you know, like you're mentioning, because of the factors that kids have more time at home, some families are pretty under-resourced and certainly many are under are under a lot of stress right now, you know, with potentially increasing stress if financial burdens build or, or people are losing their jobs. Um, you know, we recognize that uh, children can get caught up in the midst of that emotional roller coaster for adults. The, you know, through CYFD and through a lot of state reporting agencies um, for child protective services, it seems like in ways calls and volume are down thus far, but that may just be because there's not as many, you know, there's not as many eyes on kids right now, right? Now they're not going to school. They're not being seen other places where people might be picking up on this and reporting it. Um, so, so that is of concern and um, a piece where from a community level, we want to be encouraging people again within their families, communities, churches, friend circles, places that people have contact um, to kind of be helping keep an eye out for families that are struggling. And, um, you know, if there's children that people have um, relationships with, just watching out for warning signs of them being under um, increased stress or, or with, you know, significant behavioral changes that can be signs sometime of ongoing trauma. So, yeah, certainly an important question and something I think we all need to be keeping an eye out right now for. Yes, for sure. And going back to adults, uh, Bobby, I want to ask you, are there any recommendations that mental health professionals might suggest on how to cope with those scary emotions like uh, depression, anxiety, or fear? Well, I think it's a good point is that, you know, I think starting off, first of all, is, is um, being active, eating right, um, doing those things that are uh, going to keep me healthy, um, that's a good place to start for most people. When I'm working with people who have depression, anxiety, normally one of the things that I try to get them to increase is uh, exercise. Um, so those things are really important to maintain, especially during these times when there's really a push to be limited on going outside. I think going outside alone and 
or with just your immediate family and going for walks and doing things like that to stay active, I think is really helpful in kind of reducing the impact of how, of depression, anxiety, and those things on, on your well-being. Right. And, and then, Dr. Sauer, we talked about how some families and some parents might be under a lot of stress right now. Um, what would you have to say for those parents who have lost their jobs and are facing incredible financial struggles? Yeah, I wish there was a, a, a nice kind of magic wand answer. I mean, certainly there's just the, I think for people to be able to validate and, and you know, to acknowledge for themselves that this is a really hard time, that um, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of things out of our control. I mean, the world in many ways feels different and we don't know when it's gonna get back to what we knew it as. Um, so I think for people to be able to take a moment for whatever they're going through and also validate that like that feeling's okay to have, whatever it is, if it's frustration, fear, sadness, um, um, I mean, it can, I think, be helpful for our coping to, you know, uh, validate those feelings. Um, with that being said, you know, I think as um, we had talked about already, it's really important for families and individuals to be looking at self-care. Um, you know, especially if stress is high, if you've lost your job, if you're really anxious about how you're going to get through, still trying to build time into the day that allows you to kind of be in the moment and realize, you know, you can focus on what you can for now, um, doing some things that feel good to yourself. And then, I mean, I know that, you know, through the state of New Mexico and through some other local resources, there are web pages and there are um, support and resource links for people to be um able to access that can help with, you know, considerations like if I've lost my job, what do I do next? Where else can I look for other work? Um, you know, the financial considerations that come from that. So a mix, I think, of just being present with yourself and, and trying to support yourself with healthy coping and not turning to substances or other unhealthy strategies, and then hopefully using resources that are available to figure out what, what to do next, too. Right. And, and I'll stay with you on that because another big concern right now is for those uh, graduating seniors, college, high school. Um, what do you have to say for them? I know they're facing a different kind of devastation right now, um, but also the uncertain future that they might have. Definitely. Yeah, and it's a hard time in life to feel like you're getting stalled out, right? Because generally teenagers, high school, college students have a lot of momentum to be moving forward through their years and starting their kind of life in the uh, independent way that they've been hoping for. So um, kind of I'd go back to the same thing that I think being able to, you know, feel your feelings and um, kind of recognize what you're experiencing. Some of these things we've talked about as far as anxiety and frustration and fear. Um, and then, you know, hopefully being able to balance that with the recognition that uh, this will be temporary, right? Things will change, more opportunities will open. Um, but also being able to consider like what can be controlled now, you know, are there things that you can be doing academically? Um, are there things that will help enrich your life in other ways that you'd like to build new skills? You know, there's lots of online offerings now around classes and languages and other things that people can learn. So maybe directing some of the energy towards other things that you might want to be doing that aren't kind of standard academic track. And then I think a lot of families have been trying to support their children with like, virtual prom or, you know, other things that it's not going to be the same experience, but still just trying to like honor and celebrate those moments that unfortunately a lot of um, young adults in this age group aren't going to be able to experience this year, you know, but still like taking the opportunity to, to acknowledge that and, and celebrate in the ways that we can, I think are all helpful. Right. And we'll stick with the whole online conversation. Um, Bobby, is there, are there any online resources that people can turn to um, if need be? Can you just expand a little bit on that? Um, sure, I, I know that I said that you should disconnect from social media websites and stuff like that, but there are some really good resources. Um, there are some apps for smartphones that are amazing. Um, apps like Calm, uh, New Mexico Connect, um, allows you to um, access resources and uh, little tools for help bringing down anxiety and thoughts of fear. Um, the New Mexico Crisis Line can be accessed through the New Mexico Connect, which uh, provides both um, crisis uh, online services with a licensed mental health professional. It also has a warm line that uh, 
that you can just either text with or, or call and talk to somebody. Um, those services are also available for people who are hearing impaired. And um, that's a really great resource. Another resource that's underestimated is actually YouTube. Um, getting on YouTube, there are literally thousands of relaxation and meditation guided imagery um, videos that you could get on and watch and kind of be distracted for the moment. And uh, I often uh, recommend those to my patients uh, to utilize that as kind of a, a quick tool to do kind of a check-in and and, uh, and uh, be present in the moment and kind of find find out where they're where they're at. Well, thank so you that for, would be my recommendations. Yeah, thank you for giving us that information. We think it's very important, and so that's why we wanted to get it out there. Um, Dr. Sauer, this is my final question. Um, this whole situation has proven to be very frustrating for a lot of us, and um, how would you suggest we control our thoughts and keep our patience and our emotions right whenever we know this whole situation is out of our control? Yeah, that's, that is a good question. So it's probably a little different for everybody based on, you know, where their, where their prior history of dealing with um, challenge and adversity lies and what coping strategies work well for them, how much support they have. Um, but I think some of the most important points are, again, like, I think, you know, coming back to this, like, recognizing it's okay to have some of these feelings um, and, you know, being able to have compassion and patience for that. I mean, certainly if, you know, someone feels like their degree of anxiety or the mood effects that they're having are, are impacting them negatively enough or their function negatively enough that they need help, then definitely, you know, I recommend that they look at reaching out for more um, support through other people or through therapy or other um, mental health services. But, you know, again, self-care is crucial, right? Like, how can we take care of ourselves at this point? And then I think being aware of the fact that one of the few things we can't control is our thoughts. And so, um, you know, we want to be mindful of the environments we're in, as, as discussed earlier, like trying to limit how much anxiety-provoking or sometimes negative um, influence we might be getting from media or social media. There's definitely a balance there. And then... Um, you know, I think trying to focus sometimes on what we can control, right? We're, we're not going to be able to come up with solutions or answers to some of these things, but in the moment and through the, the immediate future, like what are the things we can control? What can we plan? How can we make sure we're doing the best for our health, both physically as far as preventative care right now, but also, you know, emotionally. Um, so that's where we come back to a lot and just really encouraging people that this this is not a, you know, there's no cookbook protocol for how to do things right now. Things don't have to be done perfectly as far as the work parenting balance, but really just trying to do it in a sustainable way that's um, supportive and, you know, hopefully still balancing um, some appreciation and, and perspective on, you know, some of the things that we do have right now and the things we can control. Right. And I think the whole topic of mental health during this time can be pretty overlooked. And so I just want to thank you guys one more time for all of the information and the resources and the advice that you've given us. I think it's going to be very valuable.